The Bear Facts with Bow and Arrow. Hi, I'm Ron Weiss, and we're in Ontario, Canada, hunting black bear with bow and arrow. We'll be joining up with some of America's greatest bow hunters in pursuit of this animal, and we'll also be talking to the leading authority on the ways of the black bear. And I'm Mark Peterson. We'll be spending the next six weeks in the Canadian bush with a number of different people, including Miles Keller, who has not only taken the Wisconsin state record whitetail, he's also taken the Minnesota state record black bear, Jerry Peterson a noted expert game caller who has developed a new bear calling technique, which we'll learn about. And Lynn Rogers, the most well-known bear biologist in all of North America. Second only to the white tail, the black bear is the most popular big game animal in North America. It's a true trophy for any sportsman, whether by bow and arrow or other firearm. The black bear is a hardy animal and has no problem surviving the long, harsh winter months. While other animals are competing for the scarce food available in the winter, the bear is fast asleep in its den. The bear will hibernate for six or seven months without urinating, defecating, eating, or drinking until the dangers of winter have passed when it rises out of its den to forage through the summer and fall. The season for hunting bears is either the spring or the fall, depending on the region. Our hunt takes place in the spring, when the bears have just come out of hibernation and food is relatively hard to find. There are three methods used in bear hunting. Running the bear with hounds, spotting and stalking the animal, and the most popular method, baiting. We'll be concentrating on baiting, as the scarcity of food in early spring makes this an effective way to hunt the black bear. First, look for sign, such as bear tracks in mud or wet sand. Also, look for fresh scat or droppings. Early spring grasses will attract bears as they begin to adapt to eating after the long winter's hibernation. Look along creeks where the suckers run, as this is a desirable food source for the bear. Once you find an area with abundant bear sign, set up your bait station. We've found the best foods to use in the spring are pastries, and we'll introduce a new method of baiting and explain how and why it works. Nothing can describe the excitement of hunting the black bear. Just the sight of one in the wild will give you a rush of adrenaline. The thought that the bear might attack is always on your mind. Actually, bear hunting is quite safe and attacks are very rare. Bears will sometimes make a bluff charge, rushing at you with their heads low to the ground, their ears laid back and making all kinds of blustery sounds. Usually, they'll break off the charge in the last 10 feet or so, and though it'll scare you half to death, they're only issuing you a warning. The best thing to do is to back away slowly and leave the area. Last year in Ontario, for example, with all the hunters, loggers, fishermen, and local residents that frequented bear country, there were no reported maulings. As long as the bear has enough space, in almost every case, the confrontation will end. Dr. Lynn Rogers from Ely, Minnesota, a national expert on the black bear, has studied bears for over 30 years while handling over a thousand animals. Dr. Rogers talks about the goal of managers of the black bear. The black bear is, a, is an animal that uh, does produce a surplus uh, that can be hunted. The goal of managers is to find out what the size of that surplus is, how many bears can be killed without jeopardizing the future of the population. Then the next goal is to set up hunting regulations that will make sure that the bears are, are killed humanely. Uh, that's one of the reasons that, uh, that baiting is a prevalent way of uh, hunting bears, is that um, this is one way that that bears can be lured in to a place where they can be seen clearly, selected towards the bigger bears, which would mean selection towards males then, and, uh, and have a good killing shot. Ron and Mark have chosen an outfitter by the name of Alex Bernst, who runs a camp called Bear Track Wilderness Consultants in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Alex has developed a new baiting style that they've heard a lot about and they're looking forward to seeing how it works. Let's meet Alex and find out about this very effective baiting system. 
You know, when uh, Bruce Abella told us of your invitation for us to come up here and make our hunting video, uh, we were real excited, Alex. And then when he told us about the number of bear you have up here, uh, you know, we drove about 75 all the way up here. <laughs> we got a lot of a lot of hits for this area in the spring, huh. and uh, uh, I think we've got a few big bear too. Okay. Things are looking real well. What's the largest bear ever taken up here, Alex? Three years ago, Mark, we got one that, that measured 21 and 316s. Jeez, Monster. 21 and 316s. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. It's a big one. So Bruce mentioned to us that you are, have quite the unique style of baiting. Uh, what's, what's the story behind that? Uh, well, I uh, I put the bait in some tires. And, um, hey, listen, I'm going to make a bait run tomorrow morning. And I think it would be a little better if you come along with me and I can explain it then. That sounds, like a first good view. Yeah. that sounds like a good idea. I think you'd be a freshman. All right, let's do that. Why don't you uh, show us where the camp's at and we can settle in for the night and get started in the morning. Let's head down to the lake. Let's join Mark and Alex as we find out firsthand how Alex uses this system and why. Watch what's going now, Mark. Yeah? He's a good bait, Mark. How'd you ever come up with something like this, Alex? Well, Mark, I uh, had to uh, had to come up with something that I knew when I walked in here that it was just a bear hitting it. I used to hang like a burlap bag from there. You get a flock of ravens in here or a martin, just tears it apart, and it's confusing, you know. You walk in here, you didn't know if it was hit or not. But this way, I'll show you how I do it here. You know, it's definitely just a bear. It's a big tire. Squirrel, don't move that around. There. Then I just want to go from there. Keep going. Yeah. You want one, Mark? No. All right. No, I'm all right for there. Thanks. Thanks. Well, what do we do here? Well, that, I just take this tire here, and I throw it on the top like that. Put this rock here. Well, that way the bear can get in there, Mark. That's no chipmunks or anything can get in there now. No. Then when I paint this grease on it here, What's in that little bucket you got here? Well, Mark, it's a mixture of restaurant grease and a uh, secret ingredient that I put in here. What kind of a secret ingredient are we talking about here, Alex? Well, Mark, I, uh, I got this old idiot to make up an ingredient here that I put in the grease and it attracts the bears. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the secret ingredient? Well, Mark, uh, I, I told him I wouldn't tell, you know, and uh, so I can't tell what it is, and, and uh, unfortunately, he's no longer around. What is that? Well, Mark, well, he's making some up for me. He got killed by a bear. <laughs> it's too much. It's too yeah, much. No, Mark, when the sun hits us, like the, the black of the tires tracks the heat, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the grease just starts baking on there. And... Uh, the scent just goes through the whole area. The scent dispersal is just up yeah. and out. The wind just blows it all over. First thing you know, it's really easy for a bear to find. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Much easier than some things. Yeah. And when you come in, you find the tires tossed all over the place, you know that was a bear. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Hey. Well, let's go check another bait and see how we yeah. do on the next one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't want to step in that again. Yeah, don't step in that. Yeah. While Ron is en route to hunt one of Alex's bait stations, Mark is with Jeff Schmidt, one of the other hunters in camp who arrowed a nice bear the night before. Let's join in on the recovery of this animal and see how they're doing. Look at that. Wow. Think he makes the book? I don't know. I think he'd be close. I think he's in there. It's a nice bear. Nice job, Jeff. Real nice job. Thanks. Nice Boy, bear. he came in, he was just spookier and heck. He just, uh, he'd come into the bait four or five times and just almost to the bait, then he'd run back out and he finally come in all the way to the bait and he took off back. 
you know, again, grabbed a few donuts, run back in the brush. Been chased off a couple times, I suppose. Yeah, finally the fifth time he come back, I thought I'd try to get him when he when he turned to run out again. I had to shoot when he was moving. Boy, he's a dandy. I'm glad they've gotten him. A good bear, real good bear. Oh. As it turned out, Jeff's yeah. bear was green scored at 18 and 6 16 Pope and Young points and landed him in the record book. Let's hope Ron's luck is running as high. Ron Bice is from St. Paul, Minnesota. He's bow hunted for over 20 years and taken several big game animals. Seeing the tires scattered about, Ron knows the bait's been hit. He'll replenish the bait with pastries. The grease is optional after the bait has regular activity. If the activity has cut down, he'll use the grease to help get the bears back into the bait station. We use the rock to keep out the smaller animals. And it also acts as a sort of dinner bell. Ron will get in his stand and sit as motionless as possible. Bears can see far better than originally thought and won't tolerate the movement of an anxious hunter. A bear approaching the bait will usually stop, look, and listen from a distance before proceeding all the way in. If he sees the hunter before the hunter sees the bear, it can make for a long day. We find the most productive time to hunt is in the evening, and we usually sit for five hours or so. Ron has been watching these three cubs for over an hour and is wondering where the mother is. Let's hear from Dr. Rogers and see if he can explain this for us. Mothers get rid of their cubs in the spring when they start to come in heat for their next litter. This can happen in late May, June, or sometimes even early July. What happens is the mother suddenly, after getting along with her cubs for 17 months, suddenly turns on them and says, stay away from me and never come back. And uh, she says that in no uncertain terms by threatening them, by chasing them. Anything she do to tell to get the message across, you're no longer welcome to be with me. With the cubs long gone, Ron's enjoying one of the true pleasures of the hunt, the tranquility of the outdoors.
Unless you know for certain that you've spined the animal, in which case it will take a second shot, we recommend staying in your tree stand and remaining completely quiet for at least 30 minutes. We don't want the animal to know that it's being hunted, and if he doesn't feel the presence of the hunter, he won't know what actually happened and will only go a short distance, making the retrieval a lot easier. Let's review the shot. After close inspection of the arrow, Ron feels confident that he's made a good killing shot and decides to take up the trail. There he is. He's oh, yeah. Oh, nice looking bear. He's a dandy. Hey, congratulations. Good job. Nice shot. Yeah, nice shot. Well, he gave me a real nice shot when he first came in. He just sat down like that. I was wondering if those cubs had left him any bait. There's about six donuts left, so I knew he wasn't going to stick around too long. <laughs> Sure enough, he sat down and gave me a perfect quartering away shot. You know, as you can see, that's where I went in. I came on right through here. That's what you want. I'll tell you what, this Thunderhead uh, is an awesome broadhead. The last one I got last year was, you know, 328 pounder, and that, uh -huh. that bear went 15 yards. This one here went about 150. I was kind of surprised. But anyway, you know, those cubs came in first, just like clockwork. You know, we never have seen the mother on those mm -hmm. cubs. And, right. you know, obviously, uh, almost two year old cubs, so. But. Uh, Anyway, he comes in second. I'd love to have gotten that big boy that's out here, but I know he's just, uh, he's a big he comes one. in so darn late. And there's just no way I kind of run out of time as far as trying to wait for him. But he's a beauty. He's a real nice prime pelt. And he does have a real nice pelt on him. Very nice. I sure am pleased that I got him. That was a very nice shot. Hey, very nice thanks shot. A lot, nice thanks shot. a lot. Eh? Excellent. Ron Carlson, Minnesota State Archery Champion eight times, runs an archery shop in White Bear, Minnesota called the Compound Doctor. Let's find out where you should aim for the perfect shot on a black bear. As a uh, bear hunter, I'm going to try and give you some hints as to uh, where and how to shoot at a bear when he's coming into the bait. And, uh, a quartering away shot is what we're always looking for. You can see this arrow here is coming from the rear forward and uh, on entrance, uh, you can get liver, lungs, heart bath. And anytime you get more than one of them organs, of course, uh, the quicker you're going to be, be dispatching that animal. Uh, you could be standing in a tree stand and shooting down at this angle, and again, you're going to have them organs lined up, shooting when the, uh, the bear is quartering away, so you'd be shooting forward on the animal. What we're trying to do is stay away from the shoulder area up in here. That shoulder area is a bone structure that uh, doesn't seem to make any difference whether you've got a 70, 80, or 90 pound bow. You just are not going to be able to uh, penetrate that and uh, be able to put that bear down. It, uh, it's always been my feeling that uh, just take your time and uh, make, give the uh, bear the opportunity to get into a position where uh, he is quartering away. If your bait is set up properly, He's going to have to come around and, and uh, actually give you that shot. Miles Keller has taken 23 Pope and Young Whitetails and several Pope and Young Black Bear. He currently holds the Minnesota State Record Bear, scoring 21 and 4 sixteenths. He's also taken the number four bear in Minnesota. He's the senior bow hunting staff director for XI Archery and travels nationwide doing seminars on bow hunting off season. Let's join in and listen to Miles talk about funneling the bear and setting up the shot. In bear hunting, you can set up your shot the way you want it. We have some cribbing here. We have our baits placed in here. And we're gonna set this up so that you get the shot that you want. This cribbing is gonna funnel this bear in and you set up the cribbing accordingly. And <clears throat> there's no reason why you shouldn't have a good quartering forward shot into the lungs. Or you can set it up so you can have a good broadside shot. Also, along with your funneling, uh, in case something would go wrong, the bear approaches from the other side, there's really no reason he wouldn't. But you might want to place a few miscellaneous pieces of bait here and there. Pastries work good, good for that. So that the bear may walk over, pick up an odd pastry over here, walk over here, pick up another one. It give you some variable shots. But you want to set your funneling up with your main bait here. So like I said, you have a good broadside shot 
or a core ring forward shot into both lungs. Another thing we like to do uh, with the bear uh, that are coming into these baits, uh, sometimes may put some grease down around the outside of the major part of your bait or some molasses or something the bear is going to get on his pads. Uh, he walks back off in the woods four or five miles or farther. Everywhere he goes, he's going to leave a trail right back this bait. It's a good way to get other bears acquainted with your bait, baiting setup. Mark Peterson is from St. Paul, Minnesota. He's an expert bow hunter and avid outdoorsman. He's hunting a bait with a 5-inch track and knows the absolute best time to harvest a good bear is just before a weather change or just after. Mark is pretty confident about this evening's hunt. Even though both animals are legal in Ontario and the sow is a potential pulp and young qualifier, Mark chooses to pass the shot in hopes of locating a boar of similar size. Although the year and a half old cub would more than likely be on its own soon and probably have no problem surviving without the protection of its mother, we don't advocate shooting a sow with cubs. However, the theory of the weather pattern has proven correct once again. hunting in northern Ontario for black bear in the spring, one thing that you can almost count on, it's going to rain. It's either going to rain one day or it might rain the whole darn time you're up here. But if it does, what I do, I put my camel over my rain gear. By putting my camel over my rain gear, it's a lot quieter and I'll be detected a heck of a lot less. Probably save me a big game animal someday. What I usually like to do, especially for bears, so we have uh, uh, good cover, you want good background, so I'm going to climb up the back side of the tree and find a likely spot for my tree stand with good cover. Uh, I'm going to trim out just enough so that i got room to place the stand. Then I'm going to go ahead and place that stand and see how much extra trimming I have to do. I'm going to keep that trimming to a minimum. A uh, mistake some people make are go up and they'll trim out a whole big area and then go and take their stand up and place it and, and they'll discover, oh my God, I've got uh, a great big open area here all trimmed out and uh, <clears throat> you got uh, a total lack of good cover. Al Reinhardt is from Evansville, Indiana. He's the national sales manager with XI Archery. He's also been the previous state archery champion in both Indiana and Kentucky. In the spring, we prefer baiting with pastries. However, in the fall, where legal, we'll use fresh red meat scraps. We find that while bears will eat rotten foods, they much prefer the fresh meat. Whether it's spring or fall, we'll use the scent dispersal of the tires and grease in setting up the bait. We also check the baits each day, or at least keep enough food on a bait so it's never empty for more than one or two days at a time.
Notice how nervous this bear gets when the wind picks up. Bears by nature are cautious animals, especially around bait sites that are being used by other bears. With his senses dulled by the high winds, he will be especially cautious around the bait station. there's a bigger bear using this bait and he has another day left to hunt noticing how nervous this bear is he thinks the other bear might be in the area Al decides to pass this easy shot in hopes that the larger bear will present an opportunity Unfortunately for Al, as a busy executive, he had to get back to work and never had the opportunity at the larger bear. We've got a very active bait placed on this pipeline. The reason this bait is so active is because in these large open spaces like this, the grasses tend to grow there first. When bears first come out of hibernation, they need these early grasses to get their digestive tracts back into shape. They'll feed on these grasses for a week or so, then they start looking for a little bit heavier food. That's when they find our bait, which gives us an excellent chance to pick up a nice bear. When bears first come out in the spring, there usually isn't much to eat. And instead of walking around looking for food that just isn't there, uh, the bears are lethargic for a few weeks, but then spring green up, green up comes. Grass is coming up, clover, dandelions, and all of a sudden there's a flush of vegetation, and a lot of these plants are good bear foods. Then the bears are free to roam around with energy to support them, and uh, they start making their living for the year. One thing uh, that you might see walking through the woods that uh, you might wonder, how did bears do this? Are, is a whole grove of aspen trees that's torn down so the bears can get the leaves. They do this by climbing until the tree starts to lean, then they reach forward, bite the tree, let go of their paws, and just let their weight swing out, and the tree bends down or sometimes breaks off, then they eat the leaves. Mark decided to pick up where Al left off. But to add to the excitement, he built a ground blind 12 yards from the bait.
Knowing the shot appeared high, in spite of a good blood trail, Mark decided to wait until morning to track this animal. Well, I was a little concerned at first with the shot being a little bit too high. Yeah. And that's why we left him until today. Well, it was a good choice. Yeah, it was a real good choice. Uh, you should never try and push a big game animal when you, when you don't have a perfect shot. Uh, especially when you're dealing with a black bear. No doubt. Well, as, uh, the bear comes out from the left at first, and then he walks around to the right, and then he came up behind us and uh, tried to win me. And then he come out to the left, and then I could see him out there, yeah. and that's when I knew we had passed the test. And uh, fortunately, with the scent shield, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you really knew he passed the test there. One thing, when you uh, when you hunt on the ground, you've got to be uh, prepared because, uh, you know, your adrenaline is pumping so much more, and to maintain that composure, a bear 12, 15 yards away, you know, see sitting at the bait, you know, you got to do some serious thought about before you're going to take something like that, because those oh, yeah. shots aren't easy. i tell you what, you made a beautiful shot on that bear, Mark. Congratulations, Thank huh? Thank you. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, human scent and being order free today. Uh, the most important factor for any hunter is try and be as clean and odor free as possible. Uh, many cases an animal may make a mistake with vision, he may make a mistake with uh, his ears, but once they get a whiff of that human odor that's instant confirmation and uh, your hunt is pretty well over. Uh, I like to put my outer layer of hunting clothes on when I arrive at the site where I'm going to hunt. I like to take a good uh, bath. Make sure I'm as clean as possible. Use a unscented antiperspirant, not a deodorant, but an unscented antiperspirant. Use a scent shield on my outer clothing. It's probably the best thing that I've ever found. I spray it on my outer clothing and it locks on the human odor molecule and keeps the uh, human odor to an uh, absolute minimum. Uh, there's no substitute for being absolutely clean. Once I'm good and clean, uh, odor free, then I really don't want to add any other scents to my uh, clothing. If you're clean enough, you're not there. One of the ways that we know exactly when it's time to go in and harvest a bear off of a bait, we use trail monitors. Well, unlike most trail timing devices that if you just snap them once, it's over. This particular device will last 150 different recordings, tell you the dates and the times, just tell you basically how long the bear was in there. Let's check it out. 519. Our bear came in at 9 a.m. He was back and forth to the bait over a 15 minute period of time twice. 9.15 he pretty much stayed at the bait. 9.30 he stayed at the bait. 9.45 he came in once and he left. Now we'll leave this trail timing device going on here for the next two or three weeks. We'll know exactly when and exactly what time. Pretty quick you'll know the best time to harvest that bear. Works for us, it'll work for you. Jerry Peterson is an expert game caller, lecturer, and outdoor writer. Let's listen and watch as Jerry gives us a hands-on look at calling bears in the early spring. The key call that you're after is the moan that the sow makes for two reasons. Um, number one, when the sows are ready to breed, they, they give this moaning sound. <laughs> Uh, the bears, uh, the boars, you know, equate this call with breeding. Number two, it's a good teaser call to use around the baits. Um, I like to use it singularly, just one, one call, maybe every ten or fifteen minutes, and real soft. Um, bears are spooky this time of year, and you want to keep your calling real, real, real soft. Mm -hmm. Now this is the moan. Uh, just inhale on the call, cup your hand over the end of the call. And it just kind of dies at the end. It's real easy. You can, all right. Yeah, all you do is just uh, uh, inhale on the call. That, that works the bottom reed in the call. And uh, just inhale real soft. You yeah. cup it down here? Yeah, cup both hands around it. That's all there is to Pretty it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's real easy. <laughs> Um, these moans, this is what we're, this is what I'm going to use tonight. I've been wow. using this all week. We've had some pretty good success so far. The weather hasn't been too cooperative, but, wow. uh, but tonight we've been working on one, on one pretty nice boar, and I think tonight may be the night.
Jerry is from Franklin, Tennessee, and the owner of Woods Wise Products. He's been researching the vocalizations of black bears for a number of years and has recently developed a bear call. Let's join Jerry in pursuit of a trophy black bear. Notice the shadow of the bear to the upper right of the bait. Jerry said the wind was swirling, and the bear was nervous, but he'd be back. 45 minutes later, this is the first time we've used the actual vocalizations of a bear to create a sense of competition. Predator calls, sometimes used to call bears, create the idea there's a dying rabbit or helpless animal to be had. This call, using the actual sounds of a bear, can be a lot more effective, especially with a bait setup. The older, smarter bear that normally wouldn't come in until well after dark will be lured in because we're creating the illusion his food source is being eaten by another bear. Jerry knows this is the large boar he's after. But he can't get to full draw because the bear keeps looking in his direction. He hopes the bear will settle in and present a good angle for the perfect shot.
blood on there. Looks like a double owned him. He probably won't be 75 yards down this trail where he went. Looks like a good one. I'm going to mark this. Give us an idea where, where we're going. Good hit. Jerry's headed back to camp to get some help in retrieving his trophy. Oh, he's, that's, that's a long hit. He's, he's not going to go much further. finished. All right, look at that bear. Oh man, super. He's got, a, he's got a great head on him. Look at the pelt. That's the first thing that impressed me when he came in. Bears were made to hunt with a bow. There's no doubt about it. It's the most exciting thing that I can think of. I've hunted all kinds of, uh, all kinds of game. But the bear, that's it, boy, for me. I love we work. We're, you and I are going to have our hands full hauling this guy out. <laughs> At least he didn't travel far. Good shot. It was a good shot, and we got a good hit on him. So, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let's get him out of here. We'll get some good pictures in the morning. And uh, congratulations, eh? Well, I think we better cut a hauling pole on him and get, keep, this, keep this pelt up off the ground. Let's go get one. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about about this calling. We talked about the first couple of uh, weeks, or maybe the first month of the season, early spring. Yeah. What about when we start getting up to the breeding time, maybe the beginning of June? What type of a call do you use there? What we can now add, besides the sow calls, are aggressive, threatening calls. Uh, there's actually three of them. Uh, on the on the boar and sow call, uh, you made the sow call by inhaling. Now you're going to do all of these by blowing in blowing into the top of the call mm. which works the the, uh, the coarser reed for the for the boar now this is a threat or a warning call you make this call by saying do 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 real fast as fast as you can while you're blowing into the call like this that sounds pretty neat that's the way I begin a confrontation series of calling with this warning, this pulsing call. Hmm. <laughs> then I'll pause a few seconds and then I'll growl like this. Okay? And then another common threat sound that you hear uh, when two bears confront each other is a hiss. And you can do this with your own throat. It's the best way to do it, really. Just it's like you're trying to clear something out of your throat. Just huff. <laughs> Now, when you use this, mix it all up, maybe uh, four or five calls, some growls, some hisses, some of these pulsing warning calls. Don't go any longer than about 30 or 45 seconds or so, and then sit back and wait about 10 minutes. Hmm. You don't want to get into the full-blown fight. You just want to sound like the threat of a fight.
Probably the biggest misconception about black bears is their ferocity, their danger to people. And one of the things along this line is the idea of never get between a mother and her cubs. That's something I've heard ever since I was a little kid and something I believed when I started working with black bears. But as I worked with them more, uh, I saw that just wasn't true. And in fact, it became standard practice. If we saw a mother with cubs beside the road, because those cubs are so valuable for research, we just hit the brakes, jump out of the vehicle, run screaming at the family. More often than not, the cubs would go up a tree, the mother would run off, we'd drag the cubs down out of the tree, and then the mother uh, might bluff charge at us when the cubs are screaming, but has never made contact. In fact, rarely came within 20 feet. And I've seen hundreds of these bluff charges uh, done usually with a, they draw a breath and go, <laughs> And it's done so explosively, it can't help but make you jump back. But I've noticed that when there's a lot of bluster with what they do, if they make noises, they're not going to follow through. I've never had a bear follow through in the hundreds of uh, bluff charges that I've seen. Bears have killed people. About 25 people so far this century all over North America. But when you think about it, uh, oh, just for example, there's like 22,000 homicides in the United States alone in a year. You think about all the rare causes of death, uh, black bears are insignificant. I don't think I'm ever going to meet that bear that has those intentions. A few things that you might want to make sure that if you're, especially if you're trophy hunting for a bear, uh, there's some good indications of what you have for a size of the bear on the bait. Uh, picking a bait that you might want to try hunting. Uh, a lot of times we'll take a plastic container, fill it with grease or something that the bear is uh, going to want and uh, plastic or a paper plate with honey on it something this uh, something that the bear is going to bite through a good indication of a uh, good sized black bear is the spacing between the canines anytime you start approaching uh, two inches between the two canines here on the bear you're going to have a good bear uh, another thing we like to do is dig up an area around the bait uh, make it soft in some cases we'll even haul in a, a little sand so any something that you can get a good uh, foot imprint. Uh, anytime you've got a pad that is probably five inches, six inches, it's an indication of a good sized bear. Uh, also, we have uh, another indicator. On this bait, we've got a bear, bear scat that is probably two inches in diameter. Uh, that's an indication of a good sized bear. Uh, on this particular bait, we have some smaller bear scat. Uh, would me would lead me to believe that there's probably a good size adult male here along with a subordinate male, both using this bait. Uh, why I know it's uh, uh, probably two males on this bait is a total absence of any bear uh, cub scratching on the trees. Uh, if you get a sow and cubs in here, it's just about uh, inevitable that you're going to, like in a tree like this, it'll be all scratched up. The cubs just have a tendency to climb up and down these trees and Anytime you have that, it's a pretty good indication that you have a sow and cubs on a bait. And if you're uh, looking for a trophy bear, it would probably be a bait that you would not be interested in. Bruce Hadala is from Browerville, Minnesota. He's hunted with Alex for a number of years and is responsible for introducing Ron and Mark to the Bear Track Wilderness Consultants and their unique style of baiting. Bruce has taken several bears and realizes that human scent at a bait is inevitable. We like to get the bears used to the scent by touching trees and branches on the way in and out of the bait site prior to the hunt. We're not afraid to leave some scent behind, as we know bears will gradually grow accustomed to the presence of human odor. And this will only help when a hunter takes up his stand.
sitting motionless for several hours, Bruce spots a bear moving down the hill toward the bait. Notice the bear rolling down the hill. And listen to the death moan of this fatally hit bear. To our knowledge, this is the first time it's ever been recorded. After hearing the moan, Bruce realized it was a quick, clean kill and decided to recover his trophy. Well, he didn't go too far at all, did he? No, he didn't. What, about 15 yards? It's a nice bear. Yeah, it, it was a, it was exciting. My heart was out my throat. How about you? Uh, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't see him until, you know, I saw you pick up the bow. I didn't see him until then. You saw him for an hour? Yeah, he was up there uh, on that hillside. Remember you heard that little squirrel? Yeah. You'd probably be able to even hear it, uh, kind of moving around in there uh -huh. and then all of a sudden i saw a little black foot and he came stepped out and he sat right out there but it was over an hour Jeez. i think when i raised my bow the first time i think he was probably about 10 minutes yet even coming down the hillside no oh, i don't know if i could take looking at a bear for an hour that's just too much excitement for me good shot thank you an excellent shot he went down quick with black bears well with all kinds of bears the males are a lot bigger than the females the biggest male that I know of uh, in the wild is 803 pounds. That was a bear that fed at a dump, so it was bigger than most other bears. The biggest female I know of is one in Pennsylvania that weighed 454. That's one that Gary Alt caught. They're so small when they're born, less than a pound, and then they keep growing. The females stop growing when they're maybe six years old. The males keep growing till they're maybe 12 or more. Probably the average size uh, for bears that are killed is down around 150 pounds or so. Bears don't get this big by being careless, but there are ways of taking an animal of this caliber if you have the time. Look at the scars on his face and the worn teeth. Just how big is this bear? This is the bear Miles hunted but unfortunately he had only three days to hunt. Seeing that this bear climbed the tree and chewed up Miles' seat, we knew this bear was on to us. Miles explained that when he took the Minnesota state record bear in 1980, he fooled that bear by leaving up his stand and relocating himself farther down the trail. So when the bear came in to check it out, the situation appeared safe. After Miles had left, Ron and Mark tried this technique, and as you can see, it's an excellent way to fool a record class bear. But with their tags filled, they could only watch as this bear survived another season. However, there's always next year. Eh? Hey Ron, you see Miles around anywhere? Geez Mark, I haven't seen Miles since the uh, bear chewed up his seat. Boy, I tell you, that looks like one hungry bear, eh? Well, I hope he wasn't that hungry, you know what I mean? <laughs> I tell you, Ron, you sure made a heck of a shot on that bear when he came in. Well, geez, thanks, Mark. I tell you, there's not too many bears that auditioned for a shot quite like that one did, huh? Well, I guess not. Mark, I gotta admire you for passing up that sow like that. You know, I was a borderline pope and young animal. I tell you, that was a big sow, wasn't it? Uh, they don't get any bigger than that. No, well, they sure don't. How about Al passing up that bear of his? That was a good-sized bear. You know, I'll tell you, the only thing I can say is that uh, the bigger bear in the area is fortunate that Al got called back to work. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, a cherry's bear. Did you see a bear react to a call like that? Boy, that must have been exciting, wasn't it? Oh, it was. That bear was cautious, but Cherry delivered the arrow at the right time. It was a good shot. Real good shot. Gee, that shot Bruce made on that animal wasn't that a thing of beauty? Well, I guess so. If you're going to make a shot on an animal, that is the one to take. The bear on the ground, your heart must have been pounding on that one. Well, I guess so. It was, a, it was probably the most exciting hunt I think I've ever had. You coming back next year? You can count on it. I'll be here. I wouldn't miss it for the world.